I just finished my second voice acting session with a Japanese studio. As you guys are probably aware, I've been creating this series called Demon Rush. I've worked with English voice actors as well, but the Japanese voice actors, they're, they're just literally on another level. They're so much better than every other nation in the world. Like, not even just a little bit better, like light years better. This is my childhood passion and dream come to fruition through incredible amounts of hard work and money and time, and it's extremely important to me, and I really wanted to have Japanese voice actors. And in 2022, we released our first episode. It was about six or seven minutes long. We got Daisuke Ono, who's the voice of Jotaro, and for episode two, which is coming out very shortly here, like possibly even within a week, we got Kensho Ono. He's very popular over in Japan, and we got his whole agency to fill in most of the rest of of the voice roles as well. Yeah, so episode two is gonna be like 10 times the quality of episode one. We've done so much work on the back end to make sure that it just looks way more clean and polished and the animation is way better. And I'm gonna to explain to you in this video what it's like to work with Japanese voice actors or an entire studio, which I just did for episode two. Because here's the thing, these guys come in at full power. They don't really need to warm up. They don't need to really practice their screaming. I mean, they're going at a 10 out of 10, right right from the first take. And they're so professional, like so dedicated to the craft. It's truly unbelievable. Like I was even laughing. I have myself on mute, but as I'm watching them in the studio, I'm like laughing or giggling. And John, who's the voice acting coach who actually connected me to this studio, he asked me afterwards, he's like, I saw you laughing there. And I'm just like, it's because they're so passionate. They come in guns blazing and like, like they're just so quiet. And then as soon as it's like the time to, to speak, they're just, ah, and their throat does not give out, which is interesting. Uh, you, like I, my, me personally, one of the reasons I don't stream is because my throat gives out after talking for about two hours. And I did some voice acting for episode one and my throat was giving out after 30 minutes. And uh, a lot of the English voice actors as well, like this, similarly, their throats will just give out like, and they just have to quit because if you're screaming and you're doing multiple Multiple, multiple takes, your throat gets tired. But like for what, for some reason, the Japanese, their throats don't get tired. They can continually do excellent work take after take after take with like no degradation in their vocal cords. It's incredible. Like, I don't know if they're just genetically built different or they've been practicing since they were kids or what, but they don't give out at all. So if you're wondering how I was able to get this Japanese voice acting agency for episode two, it's through a company called Closing Credits. So this is the owner, John, and Closing Credits, his company is a voice coaching agency, and he does work with tons of voice actors. If, if you're thinking about getting into voice acting, I highly recommend John and his company Closing Credits because voice acting is one of those things that like, it's one of those things where people, everybody thinks they can do it, or a lot of people think they can do it, or they think it's easy, and they don't really understand like how much of a craft voice acting actually is. It, it truly is a, a skill that you have to build up over many, many years. Yeah, some people might be more blessed genetically with the, their voice tone and stuff like that, but there is so much training that goes into voice acting, like crazy amounts of training. And John doesn't go easy on you. He'll make sure that you try all these different methods of an, uh, how you like pronounce your words and the syllables and how you kind of raise the air in your breath, higher or lower during different periods of the sentence you're speaking, all sorts of techniques like that. And you have to learn those techniques and practice them in order to become a good voice actor. It, so it, just to inform you guys, it, it's not one of those things, voice acting, where like anybody can do it. And the more work I do with voice actors, the more I come to appreciate the craft. So one thing that's different about the, the Japanese voice actors, at least working with them over in Japan, is that you have to book a studio for them to come into to do the voice work. Now, if you're hiring voice actors, like let's say in the US, they can just do their home studio setup like me. Like this is actually a movie grade quality mic. It's a Sennheiser MKH416. It's like a $1,000 mic. And you can actually do voiceover on this. And I did voiceover for episode one on this guy right here. But in Japan, it's not like that. There's no home studios. You have to go into a physical like music recording studio and get the work done there. And that means you have to schedule 
the voice actors to come in at the proper times and all that. And John at closing credits, you know, he obviously he handled all that for me. And I thought that was really interesting, but it also helps with kind of the continuity of the audio clarity. If everybody's coming into the same studio using the same mic, it will just make everything sound a lot smoother. The other thing about working with Japanese voice actors is like, how, well, this is probably all ja most Japanese, but they're just so insanely polite. Like they come in, they say hi, they're like just so nice. And then when they're done with the session, they make sure they come over and say thank you. And, and they give you like the deep bow. They, they show you so much respect and it's really refreshing. Like it's so refreshing. I mean, I grew up here in the US and just people just aren't respectful in the US anymore. And that's one of the things I love about Japan so much. If, if I could afford to move there, Maybe I will in the future. I mean, I just, I love the culture of respect. I, I think more of the world needs to learn from Japan. The second thing about working with Japanese voice actors is they have very different like rules and laws, especially when it comes to copyright and policy and, and things like that. They're extremely, extremely strict when it comes to that stuff. For example, even the voice clips that I got from these guys, if I wanna use it in my Demon Rush video game, which we're creating, I have to like pay like an extra fee and like all the agencies are like that. And so part of the reason I don't use the Japanese voice dubbing on my main YouTube channel is because I like review anime and that's not like, okay, at least the, the method that we, the rest of the world does for reviewing anime, you know, show a couple pictures and images and talk a lot. Like you're not even allowed to show one picture in Japan of some copyrighted contents, but they agreed to do this because Demon Rush is 100% all original and there's no copyrighted content on the Demon Rush YouTube channel. So if I wanna show it on the main channel, I have to get English voice actors basically. So yeah, they have all like very different and kind of strict rules when it comes to the work. Again, it's kind of that culture of respect. You know, they respect me so much, they're giving me their time to work on this project. I'm gonna respect them 110% and do anything that they require. Another interesting thing is when we were going over the voice cast, um, so we got Kensho Ono's whole agency to do all the voices for episode two, or, or most of the voices. And I listened to a lot of the reels from some of their other voice actors, and some of them didn't really like fit the voices of the characters that I wanted. And in talking to John about this, he's like, don't worry about that. Like these, they're, they're masters. Like they can change the tone of their voice. Like it's nothing. These people are so good. It's, it's actually mind blowing like how easily they can manipulate and change their voice and do whatever style you're envisioning. But one thing I'll say is like experience definitely comes into play a lot. Some of the voice actors, like when we did Daisuke Ono, the voice of Jotaro, we didn't even really have to do retakes for his voice lines because it was just, he just nailed it. Like he just knew exactly like what to do, how to say it in the way that John asked him to do it. Some of the other ones, you know, John will ma make them do, redo the take a few times. But yeah, that mostly comes with, with experience. Whereas when we're doing the English dubbing, it was like 10 plus takes. And another policy thing, they don't want me like showing them voice acting in the studio, which I was really taken aback by because I think that's so cool. Like that's some kind of B-roll content that I would love to show you guys is like, the Japanese voice actors in the studio doing the lines for Demon Rush, like side by side. I, I was really excited about that. And they're like, yeah, we don't do that. If you want to do that, we have to go through our management and there'll be like a, a, an extra fee. And it's not like a cheap fee. It's probably like half of whatever you paid in total. So unfortunately, can't record that and show you guys. And the same thing goes with the Demon Rush video game we're making. Can't use the recordings that we had for the anime in the video game unless we pay them like half of whatever we paid them for the voice lines, which wasn't cheap. And at that point, it's like, why not just record new lines for the video game, right? But yeah, the method of thinking is is very different, but I just, I love the quality of their work, the dedication, the passion, how they can just come in and start screaming at the top of their lungs and it sounds incredible and they just keep doing, they can do the take, you know, bunch more times and it doesn't affect them at all. And it's just a, it's a really cool experience, man. I mean, this was my childhood dream since I was like in the fourth grade, you know, and I'm 38 years old now, was to have my own anime. And it's happening. Something like five years of work. I mean, I know you guys probably can't see it all, but I've been working on this thing day and night for forever. It's just like, I don't even think it's hit me yet that it's almost out. 
Episode two will wake a lot of people up to Demon Rush. And the trading cards are about to be here like any day. I really can't wait to show this to you guys. I can't wait. That's been my experience working with Japanese voice actors over English anyway. I always personally way prefer Japanese dub over English dub. And this is why. They're just... Hate to say it, but they're just better than everyone else. Like, they, they're literally just 10 times better than everyone else. And it shows.